let's talk about the Home Secretary, insisting that she did not ignore legal advice, never did, and didn't break the code when pressed about her recent handling of the migrant crisis. It comes after she was accused of stopping migrants from being moved into hotels, leading to further backlogs and increased numbers held at the Manston Processing Centre. Immigration Minister Robert Jenrick now joins us. Now, uh, yesterday in the House of Commons, um, the Home Secretary said that our system, our migration asylum system, is, is in chaos, that it's not fit for purpose. What do you think has gone wrong with our system over the last months and years? Well, good morning and thanks, Ed. Well, I think the problem is that the sheer number of individuals who are now making this journey across the Channel in small boats is meaning that our system is essentially overwhelmed. We don't have the capacity to look after people in the way we want to when they first arrive. We struggle to get them into appropriate accommodation in hotels uh, or into social housing. And we're struggling to process the claims in a fast enough time. And so the quantity of people making this journey, 40,000 people this year alone and rising, has put us under immense strain. But it's not There's just the quantity, is it? It's also right, the time it's taking. In 2015, the Select Committee says there were 4,900 people who were waited more than six months for a decision. That is now not 4,900, but 89,000 people. Um, of the people who came over on boats last year, in 2021, 96% of them have not had a decision in their case the following year. So it's not just the numbers, it's also that the system seems to be entirely incapable of working properly. Well, that's not, that is not a right situation. We want to see those claims process much faster than they are at the moment. And my predecessors put in place changes which will speed up that process significantly. And I intend to do the same and make sure that claims are processed, processed much, much faster, that those who have a legitimate right to be here in the UK are then able to get on with their lives, make a contribution to this country, and those who aren't are removed as quickly as possible. But it is fair to say that these are the symptoms of the problem. And I appreciate there's a lot that we need to do now to make sure that that's handled better. But the real issue is that we're seeing so many people, up to a 1,000 people a day, crossing the channel in small boats. And it's not surprising that we struggle to handle that in the way that we would want to. You went down to Manston yesterday, where there was a petrol bombing of a, of, of a, of a, of a, a, of a migration processing centre Sunday evening. You went down there to visit. Um, the following day, the Home Secretary talked about an invasion mm. of the south coast. Isn't there a risk? I mean, look, of course we've got to control our borders properly. Isn't there a risk that, that incites that kind of aggressive terrorist-style behaviour? I mean, is that really... What, is that what you think? This is an invasion of our south coast? Well, I think in a job like mine, or frankly anyone in public life, you have to choose your language carefully. But the expression that the Home Secretary... Uh, was using was meant to convey the sheer scale and challenge that we're now facing, given the numbers of people who are crossing the channel illegally. And millions of people across this country are rightly very concerned about that because they want to have confidence that we have a robust but fair asylum system and that our borders are secure. And they don't feel confident when they see boats arriving on our shores and migrants coming into this country, a significant proportion of which are economic migrants, many from countries like Albania. In fact, a quarter of all migrants this year came from Albania, which is a demonstrably safe country. And that is the kind of issue that the Home Secretary and I now need to tackle and see what more we can do to try to bear okay. down on that. When you say, um, when you're in positions like you are, you have to choose your language carefully, do you mean to say that she chose her language carefully and she meant to use the word invasion or she didn't choose her language carefully enough? Well, we all condemn what happened at Dover at the weekend. Uh, an individual, it's an ongoing police investigation, so I can't say much about it, but an individual uh, attempted to hurt or even to kill 
uh, migrants and the brilliant Border Force staff who are working there. And that is a very serious issue. And we need to be careful that we don't uh, raise the temperature on this issue to encourage any further such incidents. Does the word but, invasion but, raise the temperature or cool it? But if, if I just finish my, my point, what we are seeing is an unprecedented number of migrants crossing the channel. And if you were, for example... Is this an invasion, one of those, Mr if you were one of, And is that well, the right word to use? Because normally invasions is, it, are staged it, it, by enemies. And it, that's why it, people are concerned about the use of the word. I completely understand the, the concern expressed by some people. What I'm saying is that many millions of people in this country would agree that this is a very serious situation and would agree with that kind of terminology. And if you were to speak to some of the residents of Dover who have seen by boats uh, landing on their beaches, like Shakespeare Beach, for example, uh, this week, or have had migrants, young males from countries like Albania, for example, going door to door. There was a lady who found someone in there in her kitchen the other day. They would feel extremely concerned. And we would not be doing our job as Home Office ministers in charge of this important area if we didn't understand and appreciate the scale of public concern talk, and talk, act upon that. Talking about doing, doing your job, uh, uh, talking about doing your job, I can't ever remember a Home Secretary, when you have that kind of terrorist attack, not themselves being out there, doing their job, going out and speaking to the public. Thank goodness she had you as a Home Office Minister to go down to, um, to, to Dover on Sunday rather than the Home Secretary who was in, 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 in hiding. Maybe, um, maybe, that says, maybe that says something about who would do a better job. Well, well that's very kind, Ed, but the Home Secretary has been entirely focused on this issue. Um, we held a meeting with security services and law enforcement uh, Sunday evening to review the matter and to see the progress of the investigation. It isn't actually being classified as a, as a terrorist incident, but clearly it is a very serious matter and the police are investigating it. I wanted to go as uh, immigration minister to see for myself what was happening, and in particular to see the conditions which migrants are being held in at Manston, because although we want to have a very robust asylum system, okay. it's also got to be humane and compassionate. And yes. I'm determined that the conditions in which we hold people are appropriate, and there is a job to be done now in the next few days okay. to reduce the population at that site and make sure that people are treated properly there in a way which everyone would expect. Thank you very much indeed for joining us.